Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for checking out another Tuesday's uh, check-in. Uh, I got a couple things to go over here. Uh, one of the things that I want to show you is some progress that's being made right now on the... Um, on the like uh, application detection for the automatic profiles. Um, that went, went away uh, for a while in 1.6 due to uh, a lot of bugs, um, especially with Windows introducing the UWP applications, which were completely throwing a wrench in its operation by stealing focus for invisible windows and notifications and uh, like background processes. It would steal uh, focus and not give it back and uh, completely destroy the functionality of that. Um, but I've made some changes to it. Uh, we're going to demo it here real quick. Um, something else that I've also implemented is uh, Benjamin uh, has released some new versions of his drivers. Um, I've gone ahead and made sure everything worked with them. I've also implemented the HID Guardian, uh, which will allow... Oh, I didn't know I had a controller plugged in. Um, which will allow uh, exclusive mode access now without any issue, without like any fancy scripts or anything running like that. Um, the only thing is it doesn't seem to work with Bluetooth yet, so uh, still working on a couple things um, on his end. Uh, it's only Windows 10 as well, so a lot of these drivers are now only Windows 10. Um, so... And that's mainly because it looks like the, uh, the signing process uh, is rather complex for getting multi-platform signing done. Um, but he's working on that. It's just a pain in the butt. Uh, all right, anyway, so um, let's look at the uh, application detection here. Uh, I have the output, the debug output showing here in the background, and you should see some notifications start popping up in there as I open programs. Um, See, I got Chrome open now, and it shows up down here, app, active app changed. Um, another new feature is it's actually tracking the names of the windows as well. Um, and that is because, like I said, universal Windows apps uh, were having problems with them stealing focus. And another problem is they run in a wrapper application, uh, meaning all games or any program games and just regular applications that you get from the Windows Store um, will all show up as the same executable. So I had to add the ability in to track the window title as well. Um, and I'll show that here by launching Castle Siege. Uh, it's actually the only UWP app I have. Uh, I don't care for them much, but some people do. So, um, And down here you see that it shows up as applicationframehost.exe. And that's the bug. For, they all show up as application frame host .exe. Um, But, you know, now that we're tracking the name of the window here, we can get the actual game uh, and see that it's Age, Age of Empires, and you can set a profile to run with that. Um, and like I was also talking about background applications stealing focus and not giving it back, well, here you go. That stupid Windows game panel bar tried to steal focus, and then it didn't give it back to Age of Empires. Uh, so... Um, the only what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement like a uh, like an ignore list or a blacklist into the program where you can define your own things that like to steal uh, focus and not give it back. Like if I were to get like an email or a notification or something right now, that would pop up and steal focus and not give it back. So um, there's a couple things that people are going to have to add to a blacklist, and I'll leave that up to the user. They can define that as they wish. Um, and another thing, uh, something that you need to be cautious of, um, when I release this new version, um, the debug, uh, like memory dump bug reporting issue thing, which I still haven't found a good name for, um, since it's taking the log and copying the log into that actual memory dump, um, it's going to see all these window changes, including the names of windows. So if you're looking at things that are, say, private, that you don't want advertised when you 
send me a debug file, it's a good idea to close all of your browser windows and then restart in Input Mapper before you do it. Uh, because as you see here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. See, it's tracking the names of the windows as well. So, and that happens. Um, that happens even if you're not changing uh, applications, but you just change tabs. Let me scroll down here. You'll see that it gets that notification as well. So, uh, just something to be cautious of. Cautious of uh, if you're submitting me any uh, bug reports or anything. Um, Another thing that I have been working on is the installer. Um, I mentioned that Benjamin released uh, some new drivers. Um, a lot of them are more stable, so I've been starting to include them into the installer. Um, show that off real quick The installer is a little bit bigger now since I'm also including all these optional drivers. Um, but the uh, you'll choose what's actually installed to your system. So just because the installer is bigger doesn't mean your end program is going to be bigger uh, because you might not necessarily choose everything that's included in the installer. There we go. That took a minute. I think that I think my computer is running a little slower because I'm actually recording locally here today, so um, it's probably eating up a lot of my hard drive speed here. Um, but now there's a custom option here. You can go in here, and here's your drivers. Um, the external language file that's just for people that are doing translations for me. Uh, HID Guardian is the new driver which will block. Um, other programs from stealing control of devices that you plug in. Uh, so it'll make exclusive mode um, possible again in Windows 10 without any fuss. Uh, like I said, the only stipulation is it's not for Bluetooth yet. It's only for the wireless Sony dongle or USB. Um, next we have the Fireshock drivers, which will allow for our DualShock 3 move navigation controllers as well as probably some other ones coming in the near future. Uh, we have our legacy virtual bus driver. That's what used to, uh, or what still can run our 360 controller emulation. And the new uh, VGEM uh, from Benjamin. And that's the new 360 and DualShock 4 emulation driver, but it's only for Windows 10. Um, but if you got Windows 10, it's recommended to use that one. So, um, yeah, that's about it. A uh, lot, not. A lot of progress. Um, this getting the installer to work with all these drivers was a complete headache because each driver has all kinds of special conditions it likes before it can install and uh, I would fix one and then two more would break so it was complicated um, but uh, I got it done. Um, so uh, expect that to come out probably in the next day or two. Um, Right now I'm just in the middle of testing it on other operating systems. Like I said, it's only Windows 10, uh, but I need to make sure that the Windows 10 32-bit installs the proper 32-bit drivers. And I also need to make sure that Windows 8 and uh, lesser um, don't accidentally install those drivers and try to screw things up. So, 
Um, that's it for today. Uh, everybody have a good one.